Thank you, Mr. Sikinder, and good morning, church. So wonderful to see all the lovely faces joined together to worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And as you have heard, today, uh, if we say we love God and hate our brothers and sisters, uh, it's, it's as if we are not loving God. So, allow me to share my screen. Yeah. I hope everybody can see. The topic that I've chosen today is called hatred. And it's a very common characteristics that we can find all around us. All of us encounter this feeling of hatred, we would have encountered this feeling of hatred at one point or the other in our lives. And we would have been subject to hate or we would have hated somebody or we would have uh, uh, said that we hate you or hated you or <clears throat> third word saying that no, I hate this or hate that. So hate is a very strong a feeling of emotion that grips the human nature. The definition of hate is a strong feeling of not liking somebody or something. Hate is an emotion, it dwells somewhere between anger, fear, and disgust. At its worst, hatred can inspire violent acts. The word hate comes from an old English word called hate, H-E-T-E. It's generally defined as an extreme hostility, and aversion of something or someone, usually out of fear, out of anger, or a sense of injury. Hate is a deep and emotional feeling of dislike. It's an extreme feeling of dislike. The objects of hate vary from person to person. The objects of hate are ex extensively different from person to person. Normally what people hate, generally a lot of people are scared or uh, hate cockroaches or hate mice or hate lizards or hate spiders. It comes to a point where some people even hate people. Individuals hate people around them. One more common thing of hate is children often express their hate towards their teachers. They give a lot of homework. They ask us to study. They don't allow us to play. And you can look within your own experiences and see how we relate to hate so extensively with different people. Hatred is often associated with a person's inherent qualities of mind and character towards hostility against the object of hatred and can derive to extreme behaviors such as violence, such as murders, decisions, that create violence and war. How hatred develops? It does not develop just overnight. It's step by step. It develops step by step. It doesn't develop overnight. Hatred develops step by step when a person does harm to another person. For example, if a partner hits the other partner or verbally abuses, 
or constantly nags at the person or is demanding unreasonably from a person or a member of groups. And this feeling of hate develops. It also develops by showing discrimination towards people, especially in the settings of educational institutes, exploiting juniors and people from different color and skin and race and gender at the workplace. Feeling of hatred may start to develop when such kind of things are encountered and experienced by person. Hate also can be developed by when somebody is instigated or somebody is brainwashed. Discrimination, unjust, uh, unjust distinction of treatment between people of different colors, of different classes, of different age groups, of different race. Hate develops in different ways. How hate feels like? All of you all know the story of Cain and Abel and how Cain developed that hate towards Abel because whatever he did was not accepted by God, but what Abel did was accepted by God. When he saw this particular action, he developed that jealousy and hatred in himself. And all of you all know how Joseph and his brothers, his brothers, how they hated Joseph so badly because he was favored by his father like a prized position because Joseph loved Rachel and Joseph was a son of Rachel. And you also know that how Rachel was so jealous about Leah when Jacob married both the sisters and Rachel could not bear children for Jacob. She hated her sister in Genesis 30. And it came to a point where she asked Jacob, why don't you give me children? <laughs> that jealousy has taken over so much that where you know she began to hate her very own sister. I have an example recently when I was talking to my boss. Uh, he was explaining to me that, you know, in the course of about 10 or 12 years back, he was undermined by one of his relatives a couple of times in a group. At that particular time, he's taken a decision of not to talk to this person. And he was very proudly telling us, you know, I've taken this decision and till date, I don't talk to him. Can you see, because of the experiences that one goes through, how feelings of hate develop and how decisions are made and uh, how it affects the relationship. What hatred can lead to? Hatred, hatred can lead to physical effects, mental and emotional effects, and it can also affect our behavior. Hatred is often associated with disposition towards hostility against objects of hatred and can derive oneself to extreme behaviors such as violence, murder and war. How does hate affect someone? Extreme emotions trigger the release of stress hormones in the brain. When we bottle up emotions like hatred, the release of the stress hormones is continuous which over time leads to increased information 
throughout the body and can lead to significant health consequences such as blood pressure, hypertension, acidity, migraine, ulcers in the stomach, even the health of our heart. Because of hate, our mental peace is gone. Because of hate that is harbored, there is anger, there is rage. Because of the feeling of hate, our language toward, towards others changes. It becomes abusive. A behavior pattern changes. I can very well say when it comes to behavioral changes, I myself was a victim of it. When I realized, that is when I realized that I have this feeling of hate towards someone. The behavioral changes when you look at that person automatically changes in the person who has that feeling of hate in the name. Until then, you'll be talking to someone very politely and pleasantly, but when this person who you hate is seen, your tone of voice changes, your attitude changes, your way of talking changes, and you become rude towards the other person. There are a lot of Behavioral changes when we harbor this feeling of hate in ourselves. What can hate, hatred lead to? You might ask me, what is the difference between hate and anger? Hate is an extreme emotion. If we harbor that hate in ourselves, it leads to increased release of hormones in our body, in our brain, which affects our body. It leads to increased inflammation in our body. Signif significantly, it affects our health. The theoretical difference between hate and anger is that hate involves the whole individual or a group and not a particular aspect of the individual or a group. You hate someone because what they are and you are angry at someone because what they did. Anger, this anger, thus can be considered more in terms of a behavior. Hate is a decisive action. It is a voluntary decision, but it can be avoided. Anger is an emotion characterized by antagonism towards someone or something you feel has deliberately done you wrong. Anger can be a good thing. It can give you a way to express your negative feelings. It can motivate you to find solution to problems. Sometimes anger, in anger, we can look for solutions that causes us anger and corrects the problems. You hate someone because of what they are and you are, a, you are angry at someone because of what they did. Anger thus can be considered more in terms of a behavior. It is a response to an action, but hate need not be a response to an action. When people are angry at someone, his or ego gets hurt. They often have the feeling that they cannot control the other person who are trying to block their block them reach to their goal. You get angry and you sometimes want to get an apology from the other person. When your ego is hurt or when someone is coming in your way to reach your goal, you are angry and you try to control them to such an extent where you demand an apology from that person. What are the consequences of anger? 
what can anger lead to? Anger can lead us to sin. The psychological effect of unexpressed and expressed anger impacts a person's mental health as well. Studies have shown that anger can be linked to chronic anxiety, depression, eating disorders, loneliness, sleep disorders, obsessive and compulsive behavioral changes and phobias. It is not wrong to be angry, but do not let it lead you to sin. In Proverbs 4, 4 it says. In Psalms 103 between verse 8 and 11, it says, Our God is slow to anger and will not keep his anger forever. In Proverbs 14, it advises us, that we ought to be slow to anger. Brethren, be angry, but don't sin. If this is not controlled, it might lead us to sin. Now we are clear about what is hate and what is anger. Let us look at what the Bible has to say about hatred. I would like to ask a question. Is it wrong for a Christian to hate? Maybe you can reserve the answer till the end. There are good effects and bad effects of hatred. The good effects of hatred is it will help us to grow. For example, I would like, I would hate to see people suffer. I would hate to see people die. Now with the recent pandemic, because of this kind of feeling that has gone through, people have started to look for solutions. And in a collective effort, they were able to develop this vaccine. And I should appreciate all these people who have Work so hard to bring out a solution to this pandemic. Another good effect that what I've seen from the Bible is that will help us in our walk is found in Proverbs chapter 6, verse 16 to verse 19. These are the things that God hates to see in us as individuals. A proud look, haughty eyes. God doesn't want to see that we are proud in ourselves. A lying tongue. These are things which God detests and hates to see in a person. Hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked plans. Feet that make haste to run to evil. False witness. And one who sows discord among brethren. These are the things that are listed out by a wise king, Solomon. In his wisdom that God gave him, understood that God doesn't want the human, uh, human race to have these kind of feelings or characteristics developed in them. These are things that God hates. Bad effects of hatred, apart from the bodily disruption, it leads to conflicts in relationships at large. And at large, it can harm the society. But what does the Bible say about hatred? In Leviticus 19, verse 17 to 18, it says, You shall not hate your brother in your heart. 
but you shall reason frankly with your neighbor, lest you incur sin because of him. You shall not take vengeance or bear a grudge against the son of your own people, but you shall love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord, the Lord God Almighty, saying, you shall not hate your brother in your heart. Hate is a matter of the heart. In Proverbs 10, 12, it says, Hatred stirs up strife. It creates an emotional block. It blocks out all avenues of restoration. 1 John 4, 20 says, If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he's, he is a liar. See what John is calling us. If anyone says, I love God, and hates his brother, he is a liar. For he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, how can he love God, whom he has not seen? First John 3.15 says, Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. It's a very big thing to be called. Hate is not a small thing to be taken lightly. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. See? When we harbor these thoughts of hatred, John is indicating that it is as equivalent to a murder. First John 2, 9 to 11 says, whoever, whoever says he is in the light and hates his brother is still in darkness. Whoever loves his brother abides in the light and him him there is no cause for stumbling but whoever hates his brother is in darkness and walks in darkness and does not know where he is going because the darkness has blinded him brethren hate is such a thing that can blind us even if we say that we are in the light and hate our brothers and sisters, then it is as good as we are in darkness. And look at what happens to people who say, that they don't have hate. Let's see what Proverbs 10, 18 says. The one who conceals hatred has lying lips. If you look at the statement, many a times we can we would have noticed or seen people who have hated others, but when they are encountered, when they encounter them face to face, they conceal the hatred and talk very nicely towards the other person. I'm sure you would have seen that, how that hatred is concealed with lies. Who is the most hated person in the world? If I may ask each and every one of you. Who is the most hated person in the world? If you ask me, my wife would always say, it's the husbands. <laughs> they are the one who troubles us, trouble each and every one, each of us so badly that, you know, it come to a point where they begin to hate. But on a lighter note, all of us flounder 
in this aspect of hatred. When we look back into our lives and introspect, we may encounter and see how we nurture a grudge or hate a person. And the question now comes is, how to love someone whom you hate? What are the corrective steps are to be taken to correct hatred in us? To love someone you hate is difficult sometimes. We live in a world brimming with rude manners, selfishness, poor intentions. At some point, we, we all have been let down, manipulated, bullied, criticized. And when we are backstabbed, heartbroken and betrayed, it's empowering to hate people who have hurt us. Our first reaction is to strike back or feel bitter. Maybe even to a point where we have wish that someone would have been dead. 1 John 4.20 says, Whoever claims to love God, yet hates his brother or sister is a liar. When we look at this, it's very difficult to see how to love somebody who hates. John was Jesus' best friend. Friend Makes it clear that you can't love God and hate God's people. And guess what? All people are God's people. If we love God, we have to love others also. So, how do we love those we hate? <clears throat> I'd like to leave you with four uh, points. It's a very big subject, but I'd like to take out some four points out of this so that we at least can correct our very nature, our very thought process, and see how we can overcome this emotion of hate in ourselves. Put the situation in con context. Stop judging by mere appearances, but instead judge correctly. John 7.24 says, Jesus often judged during, Jesus was often judged during his ministry by people who doubted he was the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Jesus claimed, the Jews claimed Jesus was demon possessed because he healed people on the Sabbath, a day set aside for rest. Was Jesus really possessed? No. But the Jews let appearance, not realities, Determine their opinion of Jesus. We often judge people based on what they have done and how they look instead of who they are. Before you judge on looks or actions, remember that every person is created by God. This is very essential to overcome hate. Remember that every individual is created by God. When we put others in the context of being God's loved creation, it is a lot more difficult to hate them. So put the situation into context and stop judging people and remember that every person is a precious creation of God. The second point, forgive them. Be kind and compassionate to one another. Forgive each other. Just as Christ, just as in Christ, God forgave you. Ephesians 4.32 We love that God has forgiven us, but for some reason, we find it hard to forgive others. But if our sin is forgivable, other sin is also forgivable. 
Unforgiveness is a burden that keeps us chained to our past and incapable of reaching our future. When we forgive those we hate, it brings us freedom. Forgiving releases our hearts from carrying around resentment and bitterness. And it demonstrates to those who have hurt us the ultimate forgiveness Jesus made possible when he died on the cross. When we have this attitude of forgiveness, we can conquer the feeling of hate. The third point I'd like to bring out is pray for them. You have heard that it is said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. Jesus Christ recognized that one of the human nature is, one of the characteristics of human nature is hate. But in Matthew 5, 43 to 45, it says, Love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you. It's very important to pray for those people whom we hate. When this aspect is practiced, we can be sure that we are called the children of our Heavenly Father. Jesus recognized this aspect of hate that is so common. Encourage them. Do not let an unwholesome talk come out of your mouths. Just because we can talk anything, don't talk bad about others. Try to make a con constant effort to build up others. But many a times if we look back into our own lives, we be little others and talk. Ephesians 4.29 says, Do not let any unwholesome talk come out of your mouth, but only what is helpful for building others up according to their deeds, that it may benefit those who listen. The best way to kill hatred is to celebrate with those you hate. When we celebrate the blessings, what God has given us with others, our hatred eventually turn into love. In conclusion, I'd like to quote Martin Luther King, Jr. He said, Darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only Love can do that. Hate is an issue of the heart. In our Christian walk, as we progress, in becoming Christ-like and developing to love one another, keep no records of wrongdoings. Forgive others, not harboring bitterness and hatred in our lives. And in, and in the end, I'd like to leave you with John, 1 John 4, 20. Because hate is a decision that you take that you make, which can be avoided. It's a thing of the heart. When we introspect ourselves and see, as Christians, are we nurturing this thought of hate within us? Are we nurturing a grudge towards somebody? Let's look into our lives and see whether we are nurturing the aspect of hate in ourselves 
And in John, 1 John 4, 20, it says, If anyone says, I love God, hates his brother, is a liar. He who does not love his brother, whom he sees, how can he love God who he has not seen? So, brethren, the Bible is encouraging us to show love towards our fellow brethren. Let's look into our hearts and see that we are not having this emotion of hate in our life. Thank you.